Hi, Mr. Richards here. Delighted to be with you today to help out with Grade 6, Unit 3, Lesson 11, Percentages and Double Number Lines in our Practice Problem Questions. In Question 1, we're going to solve each problem. If you get stuck, consider using the double number lines. A. During a basketball practice, May attempted 40 free throws and was successful on 25% of them. How many successful free throws did she make? Well, this method involves using these double number lines. 100% of the free throws she attempted was 40. So we're going to put 40 with the 100% because that's what she attempted. Now, if we were to count from 0 here to 40, we're broken into 1, 2, 3, 4 different spaces. So if we took our 40 and divided by 4, that means this is broken into 10. So each number here we can go 25% is 10, 50% is 20, 75% is 30, and then obviously 40 is our 100%. Well, here's our solution. She made 25% of the free throws, so she made 10 free throws. B. Yesterday, Priya successfully made 12 free throws. Today, she made 150% as many. How many successful free throws did Priya make today? Once again, let's start off with that 12 free throws being our 100% number. We're going to be looking for this 100% or 150% number. But before we do, let's see how our number line is broken into. Once again, it takes us 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces to get to 12. And if we take 12 and divide it by those 4, that's going to mean each of these 25% is represented by three free throws. And so 3, 6, 9, 12, adding up 3 each time, 15, then 18. So 12 was our 100%, 100%, excuse me, 3 was the 25%. And if you keep going on this number line, you'll get the solution of 18 free throws. Continuing on to question two. A 16-ounce bottle of orange juice says it contains 200 milligrams of vitamin C, which is 250% of the daily recommended allowance of vitamin C for adults. What is 100% of the daily recommended allowance of vitamin C for adults? It says a 16-ounce bottle is 250% of the daily recommended. But I don't care that it's 16 ounces. What we care about is that it contains 200 milligrams, so don't be distracted by the 16 ounces. We're going to put that 200 milligrams at the 250%. Now, if we look to see how this is broken up between zero and the 200, we're going by 50%. One, two, three, four, five. So if we take our 200 and divide by 5, that gets us 40 milligrams for each of those 50%. And so we'll count up by 40s. 40, 80, and I like to make sure and go all the way here to the 200 to make sure I'm doing the right number. Add 40, you get 120. Add 40, you get 160. Add 40 again, and you do end up with the 200. So where is our solution in all this? The 100% number, which is 80 milligrams. So I'm hoping you noticed on these double number lines that we can use them to help break down smaller percents, bigger percents, what's 100%. Um, and yeah, let's continue on. Problem three, at a school, 40% of the sixth grade students said that hip hop is their favorite kind of music. If 106th graders prefer hip hop music, 
how many sixth grade students are at the school. Explain or show your reasoning. Let's do a number line because I felt we were pretty successful on these in earlier questions and it can really help us tell the story. Zero students is zero percent. Pretty uh, life-changing there, right? We're going to 100 percent. And we're told that 40 percent of the students like Tip Hop, and that 40 percent was 100 students. Now, if I double 40, I get to 80 percent. But if I add 40 percent to that, I'm getting to 120 percent. So that's not going to work right there. What I can do, though, is break this down to 20 percent. Because then I can do 20 percent, 40 percent, 60 percent, 80 percent, then 100 percent. Now, how do I get from 40 percent to 20 percent? We're dividing by 2. And so if I divide by 2 here, I could end up with 50 being that 20 percent number. And now I'm counting by 50s. 50, 100, 150, 200, and lastly, 250. So 250 students are in the sixth grade. Question four. Diego has a skateboard, a scooter, a bike, and a go-kart. He wants to know which vehicle is the fastest. A friend records how far Diego travels on each vehicle for five seconds. For each vehicle, Diego travels as fast as he can along a straight level path. What is the distance each vehicle traveled in centimeters? Well, if I were teaching a class right now, I'll go, I'll do the easy one. You guys do the rest. I'll do the bike. All right, I, I got the bike done, right? It's 4,800 centimeters. <laughs> but obviously, we're going to keep going here. I know with the scooter that there are two and a half centimeters per one inch. And if I take then the 1,020 inches and multiply that by the 2 and 5,400 centimeters in an inch, the scooter is 2,590 and 8 tenths, and I misplaced my decimal point there. That's not good. Let's see. I could probably get rid of it by going a little bit like that. There we go, 2,590 and 8 tenths centimeters. Now, well, what about the skateboard? I know there's 12 inches in a foot. So if I multiply the 90 by the 12 inches in a foot, that gets me 1,000 80 inches. And then once again, if I multiply by 2 and 5,400 centimeters per inch, we get 2,000, get the comma right, 743 and 2 tenths centimeters. The go-kart is 3 hundredths of a kilometer. There are 100,000 centimeters in one kilometer. So if I multiply this uh, three hundredths of a kilometer by 100,000 centimeters in a kilometer, we end up with 3,000 centimeters. So fastest to slowest, if they all went the same time, the fastest is going to be the vehicle that traveled um, the most, the furthest. And so the bike was the fastest, followed by the 3,000 centimeters, so that's the go-kart. Must be a slow go-kart or a fast bike. And then we have the skateboard. And lastly, we have the scooter. Continuing on, question five. It takes 10 pounds of potatoes to make 15 pounds of mashed potatoes. At this rate, and by the way, one of my students in my class asked, 
How can 10 pounds of potatoes magically turn into 15 pounds of mashed potatoes? What's going on there? Especially if you peel off the peels, right? Milk and butter. That's your answer there. Makes me ready for Thanksgiving. At this rate, A, how many pounds of mashed potatoes can they make with 15 pounds of potatoes? Well, let's make a table. Potatoes and mashed potatoes. Right now, 10 potatoes make 15 pounds of mashed potatoes. So we're trying to get to 15 pounds of potatoes or how many mashed? Well, if I break this down, we don't have to go all the way to 1. We can go to 5 by dividing by 2. So if I divide this by 2, I get 7.5. Then I can multiply by 3 to get to 15, and if I take my 7.5 and, and multiply by 3, I get 22 and a half pounds of mashed potatoes for those 15 pounds of um, potatoes. How many pounds are needed to make 50 pounds of mashed potatoes? Well, for this one, if I just go with a table over here, and since where I've got room, of 10 potatoes, 15 pounds mashed, and we're getting to 50. Well, if I break this down, say, to 5, I can do that by dividing by 3. And 10 divided by 3, it's probably easier just to leave that as 10 thirds. Because then I'm going to multiply the 5 by 10 to get to 50. And so if I take my 10 thirds and multiply by 10, I'm going to actually get 33 and one third, or 33.3 .3 repeating. So you'll need 33 and a third pound of regular potatoes. And these are both in pounds, by the way, to get the 50 pounds of mashed potatoes. That's a lot of mashed potatoes. That is it for this lesson on uh, grade six, unit three, lesson 11 on percentages and double number lines. Good luck.